want to show you is raised beds. And I want to show you and maybe talk a little bit about the supplies, where I got them, uh, how much they cost, and the beds that my husband had made for me, and the pros and cons and the differences between what I made and what he made. So stick with us and we will go outside and take a look. Okay, so as long as the ducks and the guineas will stay quiet, I wanted to show you my little pile of lumber that I have. <laughs> Every time I talk, they think I'm calling for them to come eat. Um, this pile of lumber cost me absolutely nothing at all. And obviously this is not a very big pile. There's a few pieces over here, kind of down there on the bottom. And to buy this, I couldn't tell you. My husband could probably give you an idea of how much it would cost right now. Um, right now it is um, the first week in November in 2021 and I'm not sure what lumber prices are if I had to purchase this however I got all of this lumber for free and this is only a fraction of the stack of what I had originally um, my pile was a lot bigger and I've, cre I've I have some over there where my project is and I've made two uh, raised beds which used a lot of this pile and then there's some in the barn we didn't want it sitting in the weather and warping um, because a lot of this is not weather treated um, this is just straight lumber uh, where did I get it from well we have a friend who works construction and they build barns and houses and there was a lot of um, what do I want to call it and maybe overcut um, from where they'll have a board that's two feet, three feet over the length of what um, they're building and then they throw it in a pile and it usually ends up in the dumpster. But I know in the, in the winter time, at least out where we are, when the Amish build a house or a barn, they will take that wood and put it in a pile and burn it and when they have a break time or a lunch break, they will use that as their to keep them warm. So. Um, but anyway, this is used lumber. It's been cut. They're all various lengths. So my um, beds are not all going to be exactly the same size because it's different. I, I could have um, 12 inch pieces or um, yeah, by 12 the width and I could have two by fours. It just depends on what kind. Some of them are treated, some of them are not. They're totally different pieces. Uh, and I never know what I'm going to get, so I just take what I get and say thanks. And um, so this lumber cost me absolutely nothing at all. And all I done was said, hey, what do you do with your cutoffs? And he said, well, you know, we usually burn it or we throw it out. And I said, well, you know, when you can come across it, if you can bring it, then um, I would appreciate it. And we worked out some bartering. And so he's brought me lumber. This lumber's cost me absolutely nothing. Now, in the end... I'm going to assume that most people already have the tools and we have our tools. The only thing in this project that w had to be purchased um, was the screws and this particular tub of screws, the five pound tub, the deck screws, I wanted to make sure that they were could be outdoors and there's not a lot in here but there's enough for me to do a few projects and I don't know that I even paid 20 25 dollars for this little tub um, and I did that way back I was building something earlier in the summer so this is even a leftover I didn't even buy this for this project so this is leftover um, screws now I can tell you that I have had projects that I've done with screws that I collected when they worked on the house um, when we were doing the framing for the house a lot of screws fall off and land or even during construction sites and things you know screws will fall and land out the side we have a magnet and it's really long I don't know if it's like two or three feet long and it's a big giant rectangle on wheels and you just pull it and it magnetizes the nails and things to the bottom of it and I would go around the house and collect all of the screws and nails and things that were falling and then I kept a coffee can or a plastic container and put those in it. So instead of them getting pitched in the garbage, I kept those and we have, you know, extra nails and screws laying around. So, um, and obviously if they're going to be on the outside of your house or your barn, they're outdoor weatherproof, screw, you know, materials. And um, so I put them in very certain containers depending on what it was, nails and, um, but 
so you can do this project for completely free if you can get your screws and lumber that way with things laying around but like I said this tub was all that I purchased and this wasn't even purchased for this project this was earlier in the summer for something else this lasted me a while so um but I want to take you over and show you the raised beds talk about the ones that my husband built and show you the ones that I did with the free lumber all right these raised beds are the ones that my husband made for me and don't look at my garden or the tall weeds but we put lattice down in the front we were trying to completely enclose the strawberry bed um but he he made these and he raised them up and when i'm standing next to him you know they're coming it comes to my hips i do not have to bend over to get down into these beds um and it's awesome i literally walk up to it and i just sit and i pluck so kudos to him i love them these are fantastic um the pros and cons of these one you don't have to bend over um, it is excellent. I don't, no back problems at all in this. And, you know, um, I, they were super easy. Well, when he was finished, um, we had, this is the fabric right here. This fabric is what you put on the floor in a greenhouse. And then I had the industrial stapler. We just kind of stapled it, lined it. I didn't want my dirt going through the cracks on the boards if they shrink. So we put the plastic in first and then we used compost and potting soil mix that we had. So I'm hoping to improve these beds. This is the amount that they have shrunk in the two years. So, you know, you can see there's a good six inches in some spots. Um, and I'm planning on doing some soil improvements for this, maybe put some compost and things in here. But I've planted onions in here and they did really well. Um, it depends on like I said this is the second or third year for them and I think I'm going to do garlic in them this year you know you kind of play around with things to see what works for you and what doesn't but um, I'm gonna do some soil improvements in these and then I've been putting various things in year to year to see what works and what doesn't um, he made these different depths so if you look you back up and you can see this one here is a whole entire board deeper than the rest of those and there's another one down here he did the same thing too so I have one two three four beds I have no idea how long these are I can maybe ask him but they're they're quite a quite a certain length well we had a trailer that was on the back of our property and there was a deck on it and when we gave the trailer to another family instead of trashing the deck we took the deck cut it in pieces and these are the boards left over from that so we've used the deck boards these were free to make other than the probably screws or nails and I'm not sure where he got this maybe we already had them but um the reason why if you look at the larger one the lateral boards go up to the same height as the posts but on the smaller ones they do not he did that in case I didn't like the more shallower ones. I wanted to add a board up to it and make it as deep as this one because it's the only deep bed I have, um, the high beds that he made. So I might actually end up adding a board this next year. We planted carrots in this deep bed this year and that's all we put in there because I put a loamy soil easy for them to grow deep in and they done good. So. I think that might be between um, garlic and some other things. I think this might be what we do. Now, um, the pros and cons of this, obviously the pros is that I don't have to bend over to get into these beds. You have to uh, raise your dirt up to put in here, which we have a bobcat. So he just lifts it up, scoots it in here um, the, for the compost anyways. And then the bags I have to pick up, which they're not that heavy. They do dry out faster because they're off the ground. There's the air flowing under, I mean, all the way around them, and they dry out quickly. So there's, I had um, a drip line running from the house coming all the way down and swirling around and coming through them, and that helped a lot. Um, so that's something else you've got to remember, too, that they dry out fairly quickly. Um, but they do have their pros and cons. I love the raised beds, but the beds that I'm going to make and I'm going to show you are not raised up off the ground. 
um, these are actually going to sit on the ground and partially or mostly for the reason is because um, because of them drying out. I want the plants to be able to have the moisture and maybe the nutrients from the ground too, but I want them confined into a certain space. And um, But let me go show you the two free raised beds that I've built so far. Okay, here are the two beds that I made. And they're fairly simple. I have no construction experience at all. I knew I had to have a post in the corners to screw them to and make them more stable and I basically just make a box. You make a rectangle and then you put a post inside of each corner to screw those two and it makes them a little more stable. And I did not put, you know, anything on the inside. It's just a rectangle. There will be, um, I will possibly put um, maybe some mulch or something down in there. I'm not sure how I'm going to fill them right now. I've, um, one thing that I might possibly do um, is that I noticed on Doug and Stacy, he put, I don't know if you want to call it chicken wire, but it's that um, woven wire. And he put that in the bottom of these. He said it was to keep the moles and other little animals from coming up through the bed and eating your plants and things. So I might put that in there but the kind of the point of making these was to allow these plants to be able to get to the nutrients in the ground so I did leave the post kind of using my husband's idea I did leave the post a little higher on the corners that way if I wanted to add a board and make them deeper later I can right now I just wanted to get a bed made with what I had and actually these are pretty deep if you look at them um, you know, these are fairly deep beds and one more would be really deep. So, um, and when I made these, let me see if I can get my camera here right. When I made these, you know, obviously I made my, I screwed into the ends, but inside here I screw. I made the panels first. So I made these panels and the, the outside panels, and then I just basically put the ends on. So this part was our was what I built first, set them aside until I had four of them, and then came back and cut eight of these boards that were the exact same length, so I knew that the beds that I had would be the same size, not that it really matters, but, um, and then just bolted them onto the ends. And I put screws on different areas, so this is, these are screwed in this way, these are screwed in this way, so there's different, um, they're held together really well, and then I can add a board here if I wanted to and make it deeper or I could put a post like a um, PVC and go up and around like an arch or even hog panel and this is what I could connect it to. I really did not want to cut these off. I like the idea of having this up here. So I know it kind of looks funny and a lot of people want to make them fancy and put a ledge on them but to me this is more functional. This makes it to where I can attach things to it. I can you know, I could even put plastic, if I wanted to add another board in the center there, I could even staple plastic over it and make it into like a greenhouse, you know, and then this would prevent it from laying down on my plants, on my baby plants. So there's a lot of things I could do with this. I know that um, I had that lumber, since the lumber had came to me free, I just wanted to make sure that I used it and, um, I have a lot more beds to make. I only made these two and my dog's looking at me. Come here, Starla. She's beautiful. If she'll come around this way, not come here. Or not. <laughs> hey, you wanna say hi? You say hi. You celebrity. You Instagram celebrity, huh? People love her videos when I post her on the videos. She's such a pretty doggy. She loves going on ranger rides. Um, so yeah, I have more to build. The one thing with building these and getting your lumber and you not knowing what you're going to get is obviously, um, if you're an OCD kind of person, these beds are not going to be exactly the same. You're going to have different heights. You're going to have different lengths, widths, because you're going to use whatever wood that you're getting. Um, now these beds, and I know I have somebody probably saying, um, 
well, those beds are going to rot. That was the first thing my husband said. They're going to rot. They're going to not be there very long. Well, the way I look at it is that I got this lumber for free. I can't afford to buy those fancy dancy metal sided raised beds, you know, and I will have a bed. I'm not griping about it rotting. I'm not, I have the wood for free. I'm going to put them together and this is going to last me. I'm hoping at least anywhere from three, the minimum three years, I would think three to five years before I have to really do much to it. Um, I will be coating these and I don't believe in really putting my husband mentioned putting we have cans of paint in the basement from where we built the house uh, that are left over that I could slop some paint on but this is where my food's going to be and I really don't want to have the roots and getting the food around the paint and things like that so what we've decided is um, I'm going to try to put some kind of natural sealant on it or even um, whitewashing the old-fashioned whitewashing which is not that hard and that will probably be another video that I post whitewashing is simply hydrated lime and water that's all it is and it looks like paint and it will seal this up nicely so I think that's what I'm gonna try to do right now things are short in stores I hopefully that's not but um, we'll find out and I'll see and do that but I want to show you something that's really cute um, that it's like, kind of like your little free um, golden ticket here at the end, but something else I wanted to show you that we built for free, and it's similar to what we're talking about. You want to tell my say my stuff? All right, here's your golden ticket or free info, however you want your freebie for the end of the video. Um, this is my son's garden. He wanted a garden. He wanted it all to himself. Only he took care of it, planted it. Believe it or not, it's funny because he can plant something in the ground. I'll plant something in the ground. I water the sucker, I weed it, I take care of it. Unless he's got some kind of magic potion, he puts the stuff in the ground and maybe he does something to it when I'm in the house or something, but his garden and sometimes his plants go grow twice the size and they look better and it's kind of hilarious. You know, it's like he's got a natural green thumb, but he wanted a garden and we had cut down some ash trees for they were well the storm obviously the emerald ash borer had killed our ash trees and they were falling in the wind on our fencing so last year we spent about a week clearing fencing and still don't have it done but here is and i'm going to assume this is some of the ash trees because there was there was other trees over there too but this is my ha husband had the idea that we could just put some boards together to make his bed and i've seen these before and they're super cute so we literally took the logs and made him a bed and I'm gonna get a little closer and show you we dug down just a little bit you know and then the the logs are laying down sunken a little bit into the dirt he wanted partial garden partial flower bed so this little wood section here in the middle he put that to divide it so he could put flowers on this side and vegetables on that side and of course it was kind of my fault that we didn't get as much as we got out of the garden this year because I need to work on the chicken coop and the chicken fence and lots to do here on the farm but they walked around all summer free range which is I like it's okay but we don't have a fenced in garden and they ate us to death like we didn't get hardly any tomatoes at all out of our garden and look how big our tomato patch is we should have had an overabundance of tomatoes and that they made it a lunch every day so between our watermelon and tomatoes we didn't get much but anyway here's his bed and it's simply just logs and I want to show you something and I put this in another Instagram post on top of the fact that he had an awesome garden when we filled this my husband filled this with compost from the farm aged compost obviously and when it got to the time where the weeds were getting pretty thick, um, I helped him weed. We'd done some weeding and I said, you know, well, let's put um, some of these little wood chips. We put some wood chips and things on it to suppress the weeds. So after we weeded, put the wood chips down, we didn't have any more problems with it. But um, so this had compost in it and it was watered regularly with the rest of the garden. But like on one of my Instagram posts, look what is growing here. Can you see that? That, my friend, is turkey tail. That is turkey tail mushroom right there. 
And I'm hoping I can get you in the video. I'm not too shaky here. Let me see. Right here. That is turkey tail. And depending on where you want to pick it from, I picked, I rolled these logs out and picked some of the turkey tail from down in between. Um, but literally these are, the harder ones are the older ones. So, you know, I can pull these off if I want. And actually I did do this. You can see where I pulled this patch right here off. And we have tons and tons. I think I have like three gallons of turkey tail mushroom right now. <laughs> we have three gallons of turkey tail mushroom that I managed to save. Not only what I found in the woods, but what I found here. I might be doing more of this just for this reason. Because, and I've also noticed, and if you guys haven't been to the North Spores website, I purchased spores from there and going to be making a mushroom habitat. So that'll be another video at some point. But not only do you get a free raised bed garden. Now the one, the, I will say, the con against this one is that you can't really stack. If there's a way to stack, I would love to see it. Now maybe if you had full length logs and then you put posts on the end to kind of hold it in. That would work, but these are individual cut up logs that we had um, down there, so you can't really stack them a second layer. But this is this is nice. It kept the grass out and the plants in and the mulch in, so it worked really nice. And let me try to let you see it a little bit. So yeah, and it's gonna be a long time before this com composes down to the point where we need to replace. And if it does, we'll pull the log out, put another one in. <laughs> You know, and it's just free logs. It didn't cost us a dime. And like I said, kept the grass out, kept the plants in and the mulch in, the compost, and it done its, served its job. Not to mention the fact that I got mushrooms off these logs. And if you know how to identify, <clears throat> how to identify mushrooms, this is great. And what I was getting at at the North Spore website, you can go and check that out. I, I'm gonna make a mushroom habitat and it's gonna use logs in various ways, you know, totems, and um, log cabin method, but it's all gonna use various logs in various manners. And I did watch a video two days ago where they took logs like this. It was their experimental garden and they literally put their mushrooms in their garden with their plants. So when they would plant their vegetables and their fruits, then the compost they put around them, uh, they put mushroom spore in it. So they were growing vegetables, fruits, and mushrooms all in the same area. That was a great video. So <clears throat> if you get a chance to look at that and then you know I'm going to do this again just because I ha I managed to get an abundance of turkey tail mushrooms off these logs. Let me see if I can go around. I'm gonna try to show you. Can you see that? Look at all the, and this was all happened naturally. I did not put those there. I did not put those mushrooms there. Um, oh, that's a fresh one. Look at that. Let me pull this off of here. See that? It's soft. And it's got the right sporing on the bottom. So learn your identification. This dude right here is full of antioxidants. It's great for you. You can make teas. Many, many things you can do. Check my other Instagram posts. We might do some more, maybe some videos on mushrooms, but this came for free. You got two freebies. Mushrooms and a raised bed. Alright, well I appreciate you coming and spending your time with us today, and I will see you in the next video.